was on this day, four years ago, that a phenomenal woman who strode this earth left us. On 4th of February, 2017, World Cancer Day. She was elected as president of the Uganda Medical Association seven times. She was the first female appointed as president of the Africa Medical Association. By the time of her death, she had served as World Medical Association president. Actually, she was just about to enter that office. I'm talking about Dr. Margaret Mungerera, known by her friends, family, and colleagues as somebody who was bright, brilliant, beautiful, who had conviction. Was she the most eloquent speaker? Maybe not. But when she spoke, she had conviction about her beliefs. Whether it was family values, whether it was about medical care, she walked with conviction. Do you want to be an excellent speaker? Do you want to serve your introductions with aplomb? You don't need confidence first. You need conviction. Conviction before confidence. You're welcome. Today is a live public speaking training, 4th of February, where we're talking about making effective speech introductions. Now, earlier on, I had the live feed on Instagram. I don't know what happened to my Facebook channel. It just flipped. It was asking me for new passwords and phone numbers. It had never happened. And so we went to the Instagram channel where we have had 90 minutes of free public speaking training. At the end of the session, I did promise that I'd record it on YouTube and then share with those who missed. And so here it is. Thank you so much for those who attended and thank you for all your questions and all your interest. That is an introduction. How did I begin? I began by sharing an anniversary. It's 4th of February, World Cancer Day. What better way to introduce this than sharing about someone who strode the medical journey of Uganda and made such milestones, unforgettable. The memorable Dr. Margaret Mungerera. How do we make effective speech introductions? You will start by understanding that it's just an appetizer, an hors d'oeuvre. You know those waiters and waitresses that walk with silver platters in those fancy five-star hotels? They walk around with meatballs and some people like me. We want to have seven or eight at once. One is enough. Dip it in the creamy sauce and that's enough. An introduction is like an appetizer. You don't want to become satiated so much that there's nothing left, no room left for the main meal. It tantalizes you, teases you. It opens the door to what you want to expect. And that's what an introduction is. It opens the door to expectations. It makes people say, I am not going anywhere. I am staying for this. If that was the appetizer, I am staying for this. An introduction is that. Serve them enough that they want to stay. Don't serve everything. Let them know, hmm, seems it's going to be exciting. What appetizer do you like? Do you take appetizers? Do you make them at home? Have you had them yourself? What were your thoughts? Sometimes there's variety. We ignore some and we take others. But there's plenty, isn't there? Just like there are plenty of ways to serve an introduction, to serve an appetizer. When we are making introductions, we wonder, is it important? I have this wonderful topic I'm going to share. I'll tell you this, the nervousness that we feel, which is often, it disappears or it's eradicated largely when we have sufficient preparation in the introduction. And that's what you need to know. Write it down if you have to. Here is an excellent way. Let the introduction, one important way, be a way of introducing yourself. Think about what you like. What are your hobbies? Who are your favorite sports personalities? What's your favorite comedy? Who are the businessmen and businesswomen you follow? What is it that you find yourself doing without thinking about it. I find myself dancing when I want to find my happy place. So what do you like 
to do. Start by that. Don't start by saying, I am Beverly, I have so many children, I am this and I do this, I'm a poet, I recently launched a book. No. Here's a good example. I'm going to give an introduction by way of introducing something I love to do, a hobby, okay? In my hand, I'm carrying five continents. I have the Japanese yen, I have the South American peso, I have the East Africa shilling, the Australian dollar, and the Canadian dollar. I collect coins. When I travel to different places, I collect coins. I collect low denominator paper notes. When my friends and my colleagues travel, I ask them, please, get me that loose change. I would like to keep it. That's why I am carrying five continents. I have currency from all over the world, giving me insight into the people. What's their economy like? How do they trade? Who are their leaders? How do they hold conversations? That's an introduction that can let people know, one, I do like to travel. Two, I have a hobby that could end up being quite lucrative. I'm not doing so that I can sell it as an antiquity. I just like going through spreading it on the table and saying, oh, that was Egypt. Oh, my friend went to Iceland. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I have a friend from Sweden. I have the corona there and so on and so forth. And that really just helps me to get into global connection. I like to think about what people are doing all over the world. And looking at those coins helps me so much. If you're talking about globalization, starting a speech by telling people you have five continents in your hand can talk about world power, can talk about how we're connected so much in this global world. What do you like to do? When we were in our live session, some people said they like organizing spaces, they like cooking. What do you like to do? Use that and bring it into your speech introduction. A speech introduction usually leads into the main speech, but it doesn't always have to. If it does, well done. If it doesn't, well done. Because you can use anything as a metaphor and let it slide into what you want to say. The introduction is the appetizer. When you are introducing, one powerful way is to start by sharing a bit about yourself. I shared a hobby. What are your hobbies? What do you find yourself doing almost organically? I find myself shifting furniture so I can dance. That's a great workout for me. I find myself writing poetry. I find myself singing along, even though my voice may not be the best. I find myself thinking about the future, about my children a lot. What do you find yourself doing? Share that. Share that. In our life training, I asked people to share their hobbies with me. And I said I would use those hobbies to show them how they can make an introduction. And we had some people who liked singing and others who liked cooking. Here is an example of how you can introduce a speech with something you like other than singing and cooking. Let me think of one. There are people here who like sports, for example, or there are people here who like not fishing. I don't know many Ugandans who like fishing. They could be there. I know there are many who climb mountains these days. People are engaged in so much. I'll do sports. I'll use sports as a metaphor to introduce, okay? So give me 10 seconds. We were all proud in 2010 when South Africa hosted the World Cup, weren't we? We sang the songs Waving Flag with Kanan, Waka Waka with Shakira. It made us feel part of something important. I wonder how the players felt. I was introduced to football by my father. In 1986, the World Cup was held in Mexico, and I'll never forget, Mexico, 1986. And there was the proud, the persistent, the unforgettable, the indomitable Maradona, Diego Maradona. Woo-hoo! 
Nobody will forget that. Argentina with its blue and white, that's when I got to know what the meaning of ambidextrous was because he could kick with both his left and right leg. And that's when, watching my father in the sitting room screaming about football, I thought, maybe there is something to this game. It also gave me something close to connect with my father. And that's why I watch World Cup and I support South America because even though my father passed away, I feel I'm connected to him every time World Cup comes. And may Maradona's soul rest in peace. May my father's soul rest in peace and strength. Sports. What does sports mean to you? You don't have to be a football player. You don't even have to know all the names of people in all the teams of Uganda football clubs. But it must mean something. To me, it means a closeness to my father. To me, it means a time when my father let loose, so excited. And to me, it means the time I got to understand how important this event was that occurred every four years. I'm not a football player, but I do have a connection. What does sports mean to you? So that's an introduction. I know sports is something people like. Let me think of something else that people really like to do around here. They like to go for walks and people go jogging. Some people like pets. People like pets a lot. I have a friend who trains dogs. Let me talk about pets as an introduction to those of you who love pets and things. Give me 10 seconds to prepare. Growing up, I wanted a pet bird. Don't laugh and don't ask me why. A pet bird to me meant that when I found it flitting about seeking freedom, I could open its cage and let it fly away to the clouds. So for me, owning a pet meant that I could either keep it caged in or let it fly away to its freedom. I would look at it, feed it, sing to it like Mary Poppins and possibly hear it sing back to me. But most importantly, I had the power to let it fly to its freedom in the clouds. From a young age, I always felt that everyone deserved to be in a space where they were free. And having a pet bird meant that I had the chance to change that animal's life. Do you have a pet? Do you set it free to run around? Do you let your dogs go for walks? Do you play with them? Do you throw a bone at them or a ball? Do you scrub them and bathe them regularly? Do you take them for shopping in your car? What does the pet mean to you? Is it just for security or is it something more? Take time to talk to your pet. That pet and you, you could make it have a, an emotional connection if you haven't yet. It's more than just a dog. It's more than just a puppy. It's a friend. It's a chance for you to let an animal enjoy its freedom. So I'm using spontaneous topics, pets, sports, just to show how you can have an introduction by sharing a bit of yourself. So think about a hobby. When you are standing in a space, let people know who you are before you deliver your topic. And sharing with a hobby is important. For example, when you're breathing, you inhale and then exhale. It's not the other way around, is it? Try exhaling and inhaling. Mm, a bit difficult now, isn't it? Inhale and then exhale. When you are delivering a speech, inhale, meaning share a bit about yourself, exhale, then share the topic that you had prepared for. Once an introduction is prepared so well, there's a 75% chance that the main speech will also be delivered well. Okay? What is an introduction? I said it's an appetizer. I said you first share about yourself. Let people know something about you. What's your hobby? What comedy do you like to watch? What do you like to do on Sunday afternoons? What novels do you like to read? Ah, current affairs. We are not on an island. I may come and I've delivered and prepared a speech with so much gusto. But if I come, for example, to a group of bankers, 
And I do not mention how I empathize with them that the governor of Bank of Uganda, Mutabili Bile, passed on. It, let's just say that if I do mention that, it offers a connection so that I'm not just a great speaker, but I am a great empathetic person. And that's what you want to be, connect. Think about what's been happening. In our live session, someone said Father Simon Lokodo died as well, which is important. The writer Kakwenza, who had been through quite a torturous experience. So mention those things that create empathy. Show that you really care about what's going on in the world, what's going on around you. If, for example, you've heard that there's free vaccination going on in Kololo, let people know. There's an extension of vaccination. Let them know and say, if you find me rubbing my arm, it's because I just got my second jab from Kolola Airstrip. If you're interested, they're going to be there for two more weeks giving free vaccinations. That's a wonderful way to connect. You're giving something that's current, something that's important, and it also shows you are aware of what drives people socially and economically. And that's really great, okay? What has been trending on Twitter? What hashtags? Not all the hashtags are important. Not all the hashtags are noble, but some of them do give you an give you insight into what's happening that's crucial to people. Not everything, but a few. If you're in a space where entertainment is important, speak about that. In the live session, people talked about the oil pipeline decision. Others talked about AFCON. I've just talked about 1986 World Cup in Mexico and how that introduced me to World Cup and how I often support South America teams, how it connected me to my father. How about you? What's been happening around the world globally? And you don't always have to think, oh my goodness, what happened in the UK? What happened? Where are the protests? What's been happening? Vaccine mandate? No. If it doesn't come spontaneously, let it go. But if you can remember, then mention it. Don't mention it for too long. How much time do you think a speech introduction should be? In the session, we had people saying one minute to three minutes, and that's correct. I always say, give it a tenth of the length of your speech. If your speech is 10 minutes, let the introduction take one minute. If your speech is 60 minutes, that's an hour, let the introduction take six minutes. If your speech is 30 minutes, let the introduction take three minutes. Give it a tenth, okay? A tenth of the entire speech. You don't want it to be so long and say, oh my goodness, then you make people laugh and say, okay, now I'm actually going to talk about what I wanted to talk about. What? What on earth is that? Okay? That's the time. Give it a tenth. I highly recommend introduce entertainment news global news let people know what's going on and if you want the speech to feed into the topic i would say sometimes there are two layers of speeches all right a few years ago i started a speech and the topic was about how we need to make ourselves vulnerable take off the layers of masks Sometimes we're so pretentious, people can't see the real us because we're afraid, we have been teased, we have been ridiculed, and now we're more protective of who we are. But then the majority of people don't get a chance to see how beautiful and wonderful we are on the inside. I began my speech by covering my head with a black shawl and I walked onto the stage for the audience. There are two advantages to that. One, they don't see you, so if you're nervous, you can breathe under the shawl. Two, you definitely have their attention. No matter what, you definitely have their attention. And then I ask them, while the shawl is over my head, do you see me? They're like, no. Do you hear me? They said, yes. Do you want to see me? They said, yes. And then I flung off the shawl and I said, Yes, you want to see me, but many times I've been walking afraid because I walk in the streets, I'm ridiculed, I'm teased, I make mistakes at work and it's difficult for me to make amends 
I feel challenged by life's hurdles. And so, so, so many times I prefer to conceal who I am. Thank you for saying you want to see me. I want to see you too. Not just physically. I want to see you and so on and so forth. Okay. And then you're going to the gist of your speech where you want to talk about how we can just be comfortable in our own skin without pretending. All right. Humor. Humor is a great way. And I am going to, maybe I should take this. No, I won't take off the top even though I'm wearing a vest underneath. But humor is important. Do you know why? Because, and I'm going to, underneath this coat and this blouse, do you know what I'm wearing? Sports shorts and Crocs. If I do a lot of training online, all right? And I've learned that color is important. Smiling is important. Having the light is important. But also, take time to be humorous, okay? People have had a hard day. People want to laugh a bit. Introduce a speech by laughing at yourself. One way I would bring humor so, let, so that people are comfortable is by saying, underneath my smart clothes, I have sports shorts and Crocs. Don't tell anyone. But how am I doing? Can't you tell I prepared? Am I delivering important content? And you go on like that. Sorry, I'm really sweating. Just to show I didn't come here to look pretty. I came really prepared. <laughs> All right. And then you can use that to let people know how comfortable you are. And then they relax. Isn't it more relaxing to know that someone can actually laugh at themselves, that they're not so perfect after all? I'm comfortable by knowing I'm not so perfect. Because I always say, I'm not an expert speaker. I'm an expert learner. I've been speaking for a while and therefore it may seem as if I'm natural. No, being a natural, naturally good speaker contributes to 0.001% of your speech. Preparation articulates it and elevates it to a level of excellence. Relax. Don't aim to be an expert speaker. Aim to be an expert learner. Every day provides another opportunity to learn and use that. I invite you to learn with me today as we continue in our public speaking. And if you have questions, please share on the comments below and we'll get back to the channel and respond to you. If you would like to communicate and ask about our trainings, I am a member of Toastmasters and I've been a member since 2016. While I had worked on radio, I had emceed at various events and I thought, really, what can Toastmasters teach me? And I walked in feeling confident. Woo! I am telling you there was so much I needed to know. I needed to know how important it was actually to prepare speech introductions. Because I thought, if I have my important topic, I'll just start by saying, hello, how are you? And I'm this, and this is what I want to say. No. Once the speech introduction is articulated well, 75% you'll deliver with a plum. You'll deliver with such mastery, such skill in such an unforgettable manner. Toastmasters also told me how important it was to receive evaluation or feedback. You will never know how good you are until someone who has walked the journey with you is able to watch, to listen, to share your strengths, and also to guide you on how you may improve. Because as I said, I'm not an expert speaker. I'm an expert learner. I really enjoy learning and the mentorship and evaluation and feedback I've received from Toastmasters has enabled me to grow. And Rich Diction began from there. There were so many people I was calling, come for Toastmasters, it's wonderful, you deliver your speech, you have mentorship and guidance, people listen to you, you learn leadership skills. And many of them, because of their work schedules, they were not able to attend for one reason or another, even with the new clubs coming up. And I found myself training people who would come home while I was breastfeeding my last born. Sometimes I'd go to restaurants or I'd visit them in their own offices. That's how Rich Diction began. It was on and off. It really took effect in 2020, just two months after the official, the official registration of the company. And I actually wanted to register it as an online public speaking training, but I thought online, that's crazy. Nobody does that. Don't get too wild with your normal ideas now. 
And what happened? Lockdown. We were online anyway. Follow your instinct. It could be the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, whatever you want to call it, but follow that urgency, that that's tugging on the inside of you. Follow it. There's a reason why you're, impo you're following that important voice that's leading you. And what happened anyway? I started training online. Sometimes individuals, organizational uh, members, a lot of them then were teenagers or children who were at home because of the lockdown, right? Parents would say, listen, they can only do so much reading and so much maths, let them learn other skills and public speaking was one of them. Since then, I've been training quite a bit online and the team is growing. I have more people just guiding and strengthening this space. And we're also going into business mentorship to learn how to really gravitate towards making this space as powerful and as inviting as impactful as we possibly can thank you so much for your support speech introductions i've said that they usually take a tenth of the length of time of the whole speech it still means you must prepare well once the introduction has been written down articulated well there is a 75 percent chance chance that the entire speech will be delivered well some of the questions I get, what happens when you're nervous and tongue-tied and you don't know what to do? It happens. It happens. This is what you do. Think about a quote. All of us have quotes that we remember. There's one that I used when I was facing a death experience. I said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I used that, and as you can see, I did not die. It helped me so much. It was the only quote then that I could find, the only verse that I could find that was relevant to the situation, all right? When we had our live training on Instagram, somebody said, if it doesn't, what doesn't kill you will only make you stronger. That's something to provide the impetus you need to become strong in dire situations. So use those quotes at the beginning, you're tongue-tied, you've forgotten your introduction, you had prepared so well with your props and everything, or your speeches in the car, something. Think of a quote, a quote that you never forget. You're stuck, you're nervous, you're tongue-tied, you've forgotten everything in your speech introduction. Here is a tip. Think of a quote. What is that quote? Use it. Share. Are you still stuck with a speech introduction? I gave you a tip, get a quote, use that. Here's another one. Think of an experience that is unforgettable. I went through labor pain with my second child and I will tell you no matter what time of day you wake me up, no matter where you find me, I'll be able to describe that pain. Woo, 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 woo. It was like molten wax being poured in my intestines from here all the way down slowly it was as if my eyelids were plucked open open and then a torch a flaming torch fire was singeing each eyelash and then my eyebrows and then rammed inside labor pain, I will never forget it with my second child. She's turning 10 in March. I love her dearly. Mwah! They say that she looks like me. She's so athletic. She's brilliant. She's calm. She's driven. And she's really good with money. No matter how many times you ask, please lend me money, she'll say no. But we need to buy this for the house. No, we'll buy it tomorrow. No, I'm not lending you. She's so good with money. And I know she's going to learn financial management in an excellent way. In an excellent way. Her name is Kobu Sinja Peace. She was born on a Saturday, about midday. The pain was so intense. Even the midwife said, you have four hours to deliver this child, but let's see what we can do to uh, make that time draw closer. Because she could see it. <laughs> it was agonizing. Hey, but here I am, and she's turning 10. So share about experiences you know that you will never, ever forget. Let me try and get the light back on. Think of an experience you'll never forget. There's always something you'll never forget. For me, it's labor pain. 
Some other people say losing a loved one. So think about those experiences which are really important to you, especially which draw people together. You can even share about something celebratory and exciting. Share about how when you were in South Africa in 2010 for the World Cup, cheering people on, cheering the Ghana Black Stars, you felt part of an important global event right there at the stadium in South Africa. That's something to share. And everyone will want to know, oh, what? What was that like? Oh my goodness. Then you talk about how you saved money, you got a good car, and with friends, 10 of you, you drove from Kampala all the way down south until you made it. Maybe it took five to six days. I do have a friend who actually wants to drive down to South Africa. Uh, this year, I think she said, good for her. So start with something you like. Start with who you are, your hobbies, if you are stuck, if you are stuck, think about a quote. If you're stuck, think about a quote or an experience that's unforgettable. For me, it could be labor pain. For you, it could be traveling to South Africa for the World Cup. You don't have to think about that. The experience is so vivid, okay? So we do get stuck. We get tongue-tied. We forget what we wanted to say. Or maybe... The audience is hostile. They are drumming their fingers. They're looking at you. What is this young person doing going to tell us? Why is she talking to us? We are Generation Z. What is she doing Generation X? She has nothing to connect us. And they are hostile. Here is one way to bring a hostile audience into your space. As I walked in, I told myself that I am going to meet people who are so inviting, who are enthusiastic, who are energized, who are warm and kind. And that's who you are. Look at your lovely inviting smiles. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your warmth. It fills me with gratitude. I'm indebted to you for such a pleasant demeanor. After that, if they don't smile, then they were just born hostile. But if they do, you've won them over. And even if you feel you haven't, it doesn't matter. You have turned the table around. Hostility breeds hostility. Kindness breeds kindness. Not always, but often. Also, it gives you more energy. So then your energy is the one feeding the room and it's not their energy that's feeding the room. So do you get stuck? Do you get tongue-tied? Have you forgotten your words? You've entered the stage, the audience is hostile? Use your positive energy to change the atmosphere. Start by telling them how wonderful their smiles are, how warm and kind they are, and you're filled with gratitude. The ones who are drumming their fingers will look up and smile and say, oh, okay, she said, I smell well, good. Some may not, most will. Remember a quote, remember an experience, okay? That's if you get stuck and tongue-tied. I received this question as well. <clears throat> Somebody said, what if you are nervous before you enter the room, before you start your speech, what do you do? You've been thinking about it, all you can think of is how the interview panel went and it was horrible. All you can think about is how bad the day was at work and now you have to deliver the speech and everything is wrong. Do you know what I do? I go to my happy place. Where is my happy place? dancing Woo! i love to dance oh 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 i go onto youtube i play african music hip-hop there's wonderful gospel music many channels i play that i dance sweat like i'm doing now and i begin i dance after 10 minutes i am energized i'm enthused and that's what i take I take that vibrancy into the room. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. So take, there's, there's always something. But again, you see, I've been speaking for a while and I know how introductions and conclusions are crucial. We're talking about introductions and I've given a number. You can watch the recording afterwards. If you are stuck just before and you're nervous, Go to your happy place. Mine is dancing. Or I'll go and read a poem. Or I'll read a message from a friend whose message either made me laugh or made me feel warm or made me feel loved. I go there. I look at photos of my children when they were younger. 
I go there to my happy place or I call a friend who knows the right things to say whenever I'm anxious, whenever I need to calm down. So you know that happy place. Go there. 10 minutes, 5 minutes, it changes everything. And that's the energy you'll use to go into a room. All right? Speech introductions. We all have different faiths. We all have different political beliefs. I would say as much as possible, avoid being divisive. And that's what Toastmasters taught me. So don't come in and say, Woo, we are going to convert all those who are not Christians. Come to the Lord, the Holy Spirit has said. They will be more inclined to walk away than if you delivered your speech, you are kind and warm. That would probably bring them to your faith more than if you forced it down by ramming it with loud words and blaring voices and, you know, scary eyes. Avoid being divisive. Avoid drawing people into your political party and your political beliefs. Do things that are not divisive. All right? All right? Okay. Speech introductions. There's so much to learn. I've been doing this for a while and I know that once a speech introduction is articulated well, prepared well, it really does contribute to the overall success of the speech. And even when you're stuck, there's still something you can do about it. Write it down. Learn the gestures and the hand movements. Oh, the gestures. And then, and then, you are like a toy soldier, some of you. No. Find ways. And it's important to even learn gestures, all right? If you want to talk about how you are lifted out of a dark situation, and then. It may seem a bit melodramatic, but it does add something. If you want to talk about how you went through a time waiting for your loved one out of hospital and they recovered, you can. Oh. This is a good hand gesture, okay? If you want to talk about how you built your resolve to start doing exercise and boxing was one of the sports, you know? So you learn, you learn hand gestures, movements, feet movements, where to walk. Some people are always doing this. Eh? It's like you're watching a dance. And you're like, can you keep still? We cannot hear you when you keep just like now, it's difficult to hear me. I'm irritating you, aren't I? Am I irritating you? Yes. And that's how many people irritate us when they're always walking up and down. They think it's a show of confidence, but actually it's confusing. Stop walking up and down. Only take a step when it adds to the speech or the speech introduction, okay? I say do north, east, south, west. So north, speak, east, speak, south, speak, west, speak back to the center, okay? North, east, south, west, center. That's how I do it, all right? So people don't feel left out. Some people used to say, you always look at that corner. You always look at that person. I had no idea. All right. In the live streaming, of course, I had so many more questions and I kept wondering what was happening on the Facebook feed. You will not believe that 15 minutes to the session, suddenly I could not log on to Facebook. My password, my phone, they're asking me, what's your phone number? Do you want UK English or US English? I was like, what is happening? Pardon me. For real. I didn't understand what was happening. But thankfully, I'd also offered the Instagram live. And so my virtual assistants just told people on Facebook that we're here on Instagram, Rich Diction. That's where the live training is. But as a result, I then had to make sure that I would have this recording and then share it. For those who missed thank you once again i appreciate it for what's up if you have any questions about how to join toastmasters if you have any questions for organizational training which we do one-on-one -on -one coaching or individual groups online and physical from the 18th of february rich diction is conducting a 10 week intensive session 10 sessions it most likely be 10 week not twice a week it's targeting adults and it costs 1.5 intense 90 minutes or one hour each after which we'll end with a brunch and live uh, session as well with other speakers whom i'll call into the session so 10 weeks starting 18th of february which is a friday this is the whatsapp number 
764335. And if you're outside of Uganda, remember the code positive 256. All right. So 0782 764335. And if you're looking for the country code, it's positive 256 if you're outside Uganda. We recently joined Twitter at Rich Diction, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, it's at Rich Diction. Do join us. Our team is growing, a team of trainers, leaders, and social media virtual assistant managers as well. Please join us and share with us what you're doing. What do you need? What topics are important to you? Speech introductions. You have the contact if you need us. However, there is something important. Have you ever entered a room or received an invitation? You receive an invitation and they tell you, my son is turning one, please come for the birthday party. You go for the birthday party, there are almost no children running around, there are only adults and the birthday boy is asleep. You may feel you've been cheated because you wanted to have a wonderful time in the afternoon, look at children, have a pleasant time, birthday cake and leave. You brought your young ones along. It ends up becoming a party for adults going late into the night. Food is served late and your children are hungry and upset. They hardly got time to spend with a birthday boy. Some speeches are like that. You have an introduction that's powerful, but it's not connected to the speech and it's not connected to the conclusion as well. How do we salvage that? You can always make sure that your introduction connects with your conclusion. Even if it was a spontaneous introduction where you felt tongue-tied and you talked about labor pain or another experience you had, you can always tie it to the conclusion. Here is an example. If, for example, you're talking about cooking, Conclude by saying, so what's the recipe for your life? The recipe for my life now is vegetables. I take carrots, broccoli, cauliflower three times a week. I make sure that during the day, 75% of my food is healthy. I take starch and carbohydrates only once a month because my recipe for life this year is of health. Good health creates good wealth. How about you? What are you cooking for your life this year? All right. So I've used cooking, which was my hobby, which I introduced in the speech as part of my conclusion of the speech. And the speech was talking about how to make sure our 2022 fits in with important values and goals. All right. It was really wonderful. Thank you so much. We're having a live training again on 11th of February. I will have a recording. I would like to say confidently that it will be on Facebook and Instagram, but it will be on at least one of them. And I'll let you know, whatever the case, I'll record a video session afterwards and share on YouTube just as I have now. I'm Beverly Nambos and saying, Yuva, I speak, I train. I recently launched my poetry collection. I have another book coming out. I am learning how to keep fit and four children, loving husband, I love to travel, and I love to learn from people. I'm not an expert speaker. I'm an expert learner. Who are you? Let's share more about each other. See you again next Friday. God bless.